All right, so let's say um, this is a, a weight. All right, so this is neuron one. This one is, is two. This one is three. And this is the output. So we only have, in this instance, one. We only have one hidden layer, H1. And then this, this connects to this. This connects to that. Right. Okay. So, so when we, when, um, well, so, so let's say we've got an architecture, uh, a shallow architecture like, the, like this. It, it could have more, um, more neurons, right? So let's say this is our first uh, architecture, and then we've got And this is our uh, second architecture. We've got X1, uh, X2, uh, X3. Then we've got, right, then we've got one, two, three, and then we've got one, two, three. Right, we've got, um, and then we've got a single output. Right, so so what, what uh, the way, uh, so so one thing we have to understand is what, what we call uh, the back propagation algorithm. is what um, a neural networks are used to learn. Okay, let's, let's see how that, uh, that works and then we come back to your question. All right. So let's see, let's see how that works, and then we will we'll come um, uh, come back to your question. But to 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 answer uh, to answer it simply is so when when you've got um, uh, for example uh, a shallow network. So a, a shallow network. Um, in terms of machine learning, right? You want to be able to learn. These are our features, right? So our feature x one, x two, uh, and x three, and we want to be able to um, learn right or predict the output our output so so when you've got one shallow network you've got so in this instance let's look at uh, let's consider this output let's so let's call this output uh this one let's call it output um from the first neuron output um, um output one let's call this one output uh two let's call this one output uh three right so for 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 the first uh for x1 right so for x1 right we've got um for sorry for the first neuron so for the first neuron we've got um it goes through an activation function. So we've got, um, uh, so first, uh, uh, neuron. So for the first neuron we have, so this one, let's say this, the, the weight is, the, is, is W, W2, um, and then the weight for this one is W3. Um, uh, Right. 
right? So, so what we can do is we can say, await uh, one neuron one, await uh, uh, two neuron one, to make it easier to understand which is passing through neuron one, wait three, which is passing through neuron one, and then obviously we've got um, a bias, a bias term, right? So for neuron one, we have um, uh, the activation function, let's just call it F, right? Then we've got uh, W11 X1 plus uh, W21 X2. Plus W three one plus our bias, which is going through um, neuron one, and all of this is equal to our output, which is um, from the first from the first neuron. Is it, is this clear? Hello guys. I, I, I missed on W31. I missed on W31. I thought it's W31 times X3. Yeah, yes, that's correct. It's, it's, it's the, uh, what, yeah. Okay. And then for, uh, for, for, this, for, for neuron two, two, we then have F of, um, so now we then say um, we've got X1 going into neuron two, right? So now we've got weight one neuron two, right? And then we've got uh, weight uh, two neuron two, uh, and then uh, weight three uh, neuron two. So we now have, so we can write it like this. Um, so we can write it as W um, weight one neuron two uh, multiplied uh, by X one plus uh, W two two x two plus w three two x three and this is equal to the output uh, of uh, output two right from the uh, second neuron and right? and then from the um, a third neuron we've got F of so in this instance we've got X weight in this instance we've got X but weight one neuron three so we've got uh, W one neuron three x1 plus w2 neuron 3 x2 plus w3 3 x3 so equal to output 3 right which is this one right and this then goes into Right, so so if this is our output, uh, uh, sorry, yes. For neuron two and neuron three, are we no longer adding the bias? Yes, we are. Add, we are adding the bias. So in this, um, yes. So we've got. Um,
plus B3. Okay, so so therefore, then therefore, if our output is y, then we've got um, weight. Um, uh, so then we've got um, uh, the associated weight for output. So we can let's call it weight um, um, for neuron uh, one. The outputted weight for neuron one. Multiply by output one plus the weight Right, and this goes through some activation function. And then we add uh, a bias term. Um, so this is from, uh, O is for the output, that came from the output. So we, we, we will call this B uh, output, yeah. Right, and that's now equal to uh, Y. So so what, what do you discover with, um, With with with, uh, with uh, deep neural networks is what what we're trying to do is uh, we're trying to learn the the association of so so what 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 so what the shallow network uh, uh, does right basically is uh, based on this I've initialized uh, so one 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 second so based on this I've initialized um uh these um three uh, the different weights for these three uh are neurons right is that that is clear yes hello yes though yeah so so basically what i'm doing is I, i'm i'm learning um, so what it is doing, it, it is learning the representation of of um, of data. Okay, let's talk about uh, uh, learning the of data through. Associative from each Okay, so what this is simply doing, what this simply means is um, if I connect uh, this link, I'm connecting X1 to neuron 1, yes? And then I'm connecting X2 to neuron 1. I'm connecting X3 to neuron 1. So therefore, neuron 1 is learning the association strength 
of uh, X1 with its associated weights for neuron one. Then it's also learning uh, um, uh, uh, as X2 is connected to neuron two and X1 and X3 with its associated uh, weights. And then it's also learning um, uh, X, X3 with, with its weights, right? Uh, so it's learning the association of, of, of the different um, uh, weights and, 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 and parameters or variables that pass through um, uh, the each activation function. So when we now get the, the, the output, we now have the output from each uh, a neuron going into uh, and being combined into a single uh, output. So what this means is it only has an opportunity to learn the association between X1, X2, and X3, uh, and the various um, uh, weights once, right? It has done that once, right? So if we've got, um, is, is that making sense? It's only gone through the activation function once, right? right? Because we've got one hidden layer, so it's only had the opportunity to learn association between x1 and its various weights x2 and, and its various weights and x3 and its various weights and including the bias it is only learned that association between uh, x1 x2 and x3 only once right so when we've got a deep uh, neural network when you've got more than um one uh, hidden layer in this instance we've got uh, this one and then we've got um, uh, uh, this one, right? So what that means is I've got a now another layer where I can take the same information and be able to learn it and be able to learn it So this is hidden layer one, and this is hidden layer two. So I've got the opportunity to learn, right? So I learn, so I, it passes, I've got another opportunity, again, to learn the different combination of my, my parameters, right? When they pass through this hidden layer, right? And then it was then combined to, to this output. So in this instance, I've got, um, if we look at the uh, the combination, right? So, so let's look at the combination. So in this instance, I've got, um, in terms of the association, uh, if we compare the two, right? So in this instance, I've got double the association between the combination of X1, X2, and X3 in these parameters, right? So it means I've got more ability to learn Right, as the information is passed, uh, since this is a feed forward network, it's fed in this direction. I've got more data that passes through um, the second layer that has come from the previous layer that it has learned, right? That is passing through the hidden layer. So, what that actually means is the second uh, hidden layer is learning more than the first. A hidden layer and then then is uh, so if we then say this is our our output it means that uh, hidden layer number two uh, would have uh, learned um, the parameters more and the association between uh, the, the the features more than uh, the shallow network is, is that making sense yes sir. Right. So, so if we if we, if we then consider um, the, the the so this one is the deep um, the deep neural network. Yeah. So can you see in in this instance now? I'm now I've got. Um, so let's take. Um, um, so this is our Y, right? For the shallow network, but for the case uh, for our 
our our our, our um our deep neural network will will have um uh, for example uh will 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 have um so let's call yeah, let's call this uh, so let's let's uh, get the notation correctly so that we don't confuse each other so uh, for so for hidden layer 2 we'll have um for for the for come on so let's call this um um layer 2 and neuron 1 uh, layer two neuron two layer two neuron three right so that we don't confuse each other right so for so the input from so the output okay so the output So the output one, right? So mathematical, the, we're saying O is the output from from this first neuron, isn't it? Yeah. Come on, guys. This one, the output. Yes. 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 Following. Yeah. So so they, they, therefore. Out, out, the output. So let's just focus on output one for now. We're now focusing on the uh, on the hidden, also on the deep neural network. So the output for 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 neuron for the first neuron uh, is fed. So let so th in this instance we've got one, two, uh, uh, three. Uh, we've got layer two neuron one, uh, layer two neuron two, layer two neuron three. So this is fed into that and this is fed into that and this is fed into that right yeah yes. that is clear yes. right yes so, yes, clear. Right? yes so therefore then we now we now have output um uh, layer 2 output 1 uh, from from neuron 1 layer Two output from neuron two, uh, layer two output from neuron three, right? So so let's look at the this this output this one for layer two from neuron one. So therefore, in this instance, it will be uh, it, it it will now be uh, the So, so let's say the output. So we've got a. Uh, let's just call it a, um, our output. Um, weight one. Uh, weight two. Uh, weight three. So therefore, in this instance, we'll, we'll now have. Um, What am I missing? So the output from here, output from here, it, it goes. Yeah, so the output from neuron one, right? This output, it is fed into here, right? And also the output from um, neuron two is fed into layer two neuron one and the output from there. So we, we've got, so I, 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 I had this the, the wrong way around, sorry. Uh, let me do it. Let me, let me, let me, let me redraw this again. So we don't confuse each other.
So we, we're looking at, yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Uh, layer two neuron one, and therefore we're looking at output one, output um, from neuron one, output um, uh, two, and then output uh, three from the first um, a layer, and that is fed into there, and that is fed into there, and that is fed into there. And then we then get the output, we, we call it um, um, uh, two uh, from, the, uh, from the second layer. So this will then give us F of, uh, so let's call it uh, W11, uh, one, one, uh, W, um one two w uh three one so therefore we we then have um uh, zero the w one one zero output one plus w one two output uh, 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 two plus w three one output three plus bias um, two one equal to the output uh, two uh, from the first from the first uh, uh, neuron in the second uh, sorry uh, yes so this is you use me to represent the uh, so so this is layer um, layer two uh, the first uh, neuron right so therefore then this is the output from this is this one this output here which will be which will be fed into into here right so can you see what 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 we've done is we've also added another layer another input that we are we're, we're putting into uh, our output y where we've actually learned more association between the outputs that came from the first hidden layer into the first um, uh, a new, uh, into the first uh, neuron and uh, this one and then and then we're going to have the output from this first hidden layer going into this one then the output from this uh, neuron going into this one and their association uh, of the outputs so what that basically means is when it comes to uh, learning And one thing you must you must you must not right is I, I, I'm I, there is no memory between layer one and layer two. Are we together on that one? Yeah, are we together on that one? So so there's there's, there's, there's no so there's no memory. Uh, one other thing to note: there's no memory uh, 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 between um, H H uh, H one and uh, and h2 so what that simply means the information that is learned um on hidden layer one is completely forgotten 
as it is on, on layer one, when it is passed to layer number two, right? Because there's no storing of, of information and states at each hidden layer, right? There are neural networks which actually do that, but in this instance, uh, for this simple uh, structure that we have, there is no um, a storing of uh, or, or remembering of uh, of states uh, of of inputs between uh, hidden layer one and hidden layer two. So therefore, what that actually means is this will only remember as far back as its previous um, uh, input, which is as uh, as. Uh, uh, which is output one, output two, and output three, output three. So, and then in this instance, you now have input coming from each neuron from the previous layer and being fed into every other neuron and then to the output. So what that means is there is propagation of information from each neuron going onto the next layer, but this neuron does not remember what it has sent uh, to, the, uh, to the next layer because there's no uh, concept of uh, storing states uh, of information at each hidden layer. So, so, so therefore, what that means is uh, information that is passed from hidden layer one to hidden layer two is relearned at every hidden layer. Right? Is that making sense? Yes, Doc. Yeah. So, so therefore, the more the hidden layers you have, it means the passing on of the information from each layer is being relearned uh, quite a number of times. So therefore, it is learning more than when you've got one hidden layer. So yes, the one you've got one hidden layer on one, one shallow network. Is that, is that making sense? So so in so so we can compare that to an instance where um, we have. where we've got uh, x1, x2, uh, x3. Uh, so hidden layer one. All right, so let's go to hidden layer number, number two, hidden layer number three, hidden layer number four, uh, let's just have an, an, out, an output. Uh, let's just keep it uh, to, to three uh, neurons for each, for each layer. Right. So, so what that what what that means, right? Is if if we look at, at at the difference between these architectures, right? Well, so what that means is, um, at each stage, is I as the neural network feeds the information forward in this direction, right? It is learning the association between x one, x two, x three, right? So in this first hidden layer, it only learns it um, one, two, if you look at the combination, it learns it um, so, so let's consider, so, so, it, it, so for x1, it goes through one, two, three, yes? Come on guys, for x1 is one, two, three, for x2 is also one, two, three, for x3 is one, two, three, so it's three by three, yeah? Yes, Which yes, is, doc. yes, doc. Plus the bias plus one, right? Mm -hmm. So, so therefore, in terms of the combination of learning, it is done that uh, only ten times. Yes. Yes. Yes, doc. Yes, doc. Yes, yeah? doc. Is that yes. Make, that's making sense? Yes. 
So now when the same information here is now passed, can you see? Um, so we now have output here, right? The parameters that have come from here are now more, right? We now have three, a combination of three more parameters, right? That are being fed instead of one, yeah? So we've got a, 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 this, this, this situation. Right, so so that we answer it mathematically, we we now have W one, W two, and, and so on. Right, so so O one, yeah, being fed into yes, yes, doc. So so for so O one is got is plus the bias has got four parameters, yeah, and O uh, and O two, the output from the second uh, has got also got four, has also got four. And it's also got four, right? So, and those four parameters are being fed into here, right? Into here, into here. So we now have four, uh, sorry, uh, four by, right? Right, one, two, three, four, four, four by one, yes? Mm -hmm. Right, four by one by three, right? Which is um, four times three. So in this instance, uh, we've grown it to uh, to twelve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Yes. So it means that at every single layer, we're increasing the ability for it to learn. Let's see. Here is four. One, two, three, four. That goes into in, into one. So four times three. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool, right? So so we've increased, so uh, including plus here, let's not forget plus the bias, right? So which makes it 13 instead of 12. Uh, sorry, Doc. Yes? I, I think I missed uh, where the 4 came from. So here we've got... Sorry to take you back. Sorry, so, so the, so the one, this is 1, this is 2. This is three. three. Yes. That's four. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I, I, so you are getting it right, man. So mathematically, so what is now happening is we, we've, we at each layer we are increasing the number of um, parameters from the previous input, right? In, in the first instance, we only had X and W one. Right, and then the, in the next instance, we now have the output from the previous layer with its weight, associated weight, right, right, and then go into that neuron, right. So at every layer, we're increasing the size of the of its ability to learn uh, the parameters, right. So a, 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 so 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 if you look at a, a shallow architecture with one hidden layer, it, it only has Uh, 10, so it only has 10 parameters, right? 3 by 3 plus 1, right? So this one has got, so this one has got uh, 3 by 3, right? Plus 1 bias, right? So for this heat in there, it only has, um, um, which is 10, right? So you see, we are increasing the, the size uh, of the information that is passed from hidden layer to hidden layer to hidden layer to hidden layer. To hidden layer. So therefore, what it actually means is it is learning, it is learning more, right? The representation of our data, all the possible different uh, Yeah, is that making sense, guys? Yes, Joe. 
so, so this is why uh, shallow this is why shallow architectures are are not shallow architectures cannot be better than than, than deep uh, than deep deep deep, uh, deep deep architectures deep architectures actually learn more representation because at every layer you are using different combinations of the association of the different uh, inputs right so the output from neuron one becomes input to neuron one in layer two the output for neuron uh, so the output of neuron one becomes input for for neuron one two and three in the in layer number two same applies to the output of neuron uh, two so the output from the previous layer becomes input into the next layer so right so as you're propagating the information um, uh, 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 forward so what that means is in every layer you are increasing the ability of it uh, to to learn. So let's look at the um, to answer the question further. Uh, let's let, let's look at the um, a back the back propagation. Um, let's look at the uh, uh, back propagation algorithm from where we left off uh, yesterday. Um, All right, so we, uh, we were here uh, uh, yesterday, so we, right, you can see my slide, yes? Yes, we can see it. Yes, we can see so, so, we, so we already yes. know, we already know supervised learning, right? Um, so you can see in this instance, uh, every, every neuron connects to every new other neuron in the next um, 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 a, 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 a layer uh, and and what that means is you is learning the association the different association uh, of the data right that that uh, of the of the input right so when you then take um, uh, a cat and a dog for now uh, for example so for every layer that you put it through you it is learning different attributes of that particular uh, for that particular feature as you propagate um, the uh, the information um, uh, forward. So let's let, let's uh, and then for uh, is for multi classification the same uh, principle applies. And then we spoke about unsupervised um, uh, uh, learning, right? So so let's look at. Um, Let's look at the the back propagation algorithm. How it actually works. So, so the what the back propagation algorithm. So that you actually understand the learning process, right? So that you, so this this then answers your question even even much better than than the, the mathematical um, aspect that I was trying to uh, to show you. So so where, the the way how neural networks learn is through a process called a back propagation. So you you have your data uh, and so so how this works is 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 uh, let me show you um all right so so this is how the back propagation algorithm uh works uh, showing you as an animation so it, you you have um uh, so remember, we said the weights are initialized randomly, yeah? Yes, guys? Yes, Doc. Yes. Uh, remember, we said uh, either using a Xavier normal or the uniform, right? Yeah. Yes, right? Doc. So, so, so what, what you, uh, and remember the part of um, um, uh, machine learning is we, we want to understand uh, the contribution of each uh, feature to the predictive power of the algorithm, right? So, in the first, 
in the first forward pass. So, 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 let, let, so, so let, let's, let, let's look at it this way, right? So let's go back to, 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 uh, to, uh, to, uh, to our diagram, right? So what, what happens is we, we initialize our weights, right? We initialize our, our W1, uh, W2, uh, W3, uh, W4, and then we then propagate that information uh, forward. And then based on that information that we propagated for, we compute the error, right? And remember the error is defined by y hat, and then we compare it to the actual value of y. And then we, if we see that our error is far off, we then propagate We then propagate the error backwards, right? We then propagate the error backwards, and then we readjust the weights. Right? We, we readjust the weights. After we've readjusted the weights, we then propagate the information forward again and compute the error. Right? So that we are so so basically what we're doing is we are minimizing the error if if you recall. Uh, yes. So so what you will see in the in, in the first instance, um uh, it would have initial randomly initialized uh, W1, uh, W2, uh, and W3, right? It would have randomly, uh, uh, right? And then what it will then do in in the second um, uh, in the in the back propagation, it will then readjust W. Uh, let's call it W1 by back propagation W2. Uh, uh, back propagation W3 uh, by, by back uh, propagation, and then it will then pass the same information forward, forward again and, and compute the error to see whether that has um, a, a decreased. So it, if, it, if it is decreased, it will then uh, continue, right, uh, to do that process until uh, it has minimized um, uh, the, the, the error rate, right? So that's how back propagation works. Back propagation works by feeding um, the information um, uh, forward so that you compute the error rate. And then when you see the error rate, you then want to feed it, the error rate backwards so that you readjust the weights, right? And then you then propagate it forward again. So what that simply means is um, if, 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 if I have um, uh, my features x1, x2, and x3, what that ultimately me means is as I'm learning my parameters, right, as I'm readjusting the weights, the features or the variables that contribute more to the predictive power of the algorithms I will be assigned higher weights, right? Yes, they'll be assigned higher weights, and those that do not contribute to the uh, assigned uh, lower weights as it readjusts, as it reduces the error, right? So that's the back, uh, uh, back propagation uh, uh, algorithm. So you update the weights and biases to decrease the loss function. The forward pass, you compute the output and error, uh, and the error, right? And the back pass, you compute compute the um, uh, the gradients as you adjust the weights. So a fraction of the weight gradient is subtracted from um, uh, from the weights. So it happens like this. Right, and then you 
right? And then you then feed it um, a, a forward um, a, again, right? So you've got a forward pass, you compute the error rate, then the back pass, then readjust the uh, 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 the weights, right? And then it's fed uh, a, a, four, a, a, four, a four forward again. So we can look at it um, like this. Right? So, Yes, so this is making sense, yes? So that's what back propagation. So what the back propagation does, it, it actually then weeds out the features which do not contribute to um, the predictive power of your algorithm, right? So, so then there's a lot of um, confusion, especially from, from other machine learning experts, they don't realize is uh, the back propagation prop propagation algorithm actually uh, is a form of dimensionality reduction where it's actually uh, reducing the size of your features by allocating weights right appropriately so the features that do not contribute to any predictive uh, power of your algorithm they are assigned zero right they're given a weight of zero so it is actually automatically prunes the uh, uh, features that do not contribute to the predictive power of the uh, of the uh, of the algorithm. So, therefore, with deep learning, as it is learning uh, through the back prop propagation process, it's actually also uh, doing some um, uh, uh, feature feature engineering. Right? Are there any questions on this? Uh, for me, you explained it well, Doc. Guys, you're, you're awfully quiet. Should I move on? Yeah. I, I've got uh, two questions. Yes. Uh, maybe I could have missed it because yesterday I couldn't attend the, the lecture. But my first question is, is there a threshold for the error? Is it predefined? Or maybe the data analyst has to to define the threshold for the error according to the model or to the scenario. Then the second question is, our neurons, uh, are they of the same function? Uh, do they well, compute? Well, well, Oh, okay, so, so so a lot of these questions will be answered when you are actually doing the coding. So when you're now, now doing the coding, it will actually make a lot of sense. Okay. Yeah. So okay. what, what yeah, so so what you what, what you what you will see, right? Um uh for so 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 let, let, let me come back here. Um so what you will see, for example, um, that hidden layer number one will use the same, uh, it will use the same activation function, right? This will use the same activation function. Right? Even though there are, this layer has got uh, a number of neurons, layer one, two, and, and, and three, but the activation function will be the same. Uh, and, and even for hidden layer number three, the activation function uh, will be, um, uh, will be the same, right? So each hidden layer will have the same activation function, but it will it, they can have different number of neurons, but the number of um, um, the activation function will be the same. So, uh, for example, here we can increase the number of neurons to uh, to even uh, let's say ten, but it it mm -hmm. it still uses uh, the same um, uh, activation function. And remember, uh, maybe you missed it from the lecture that uh, mm. we, yesterday when we were talking about activation functions. Uh, that they, if you look at um, 
uh, a seed point, uh, uh, for example. Mm -hmm. Seed point activation function. Um, Yeah, it's something like this. So it's an end is defined by one over one plus e to the minus uh, x, right? So that's the sigma mm -hmm. function. So it's upper bounded by one, right? And lower bounded by uh, by zero, right? And and one. So what that means is it, it is it allows information to pass through, or it is um, fires when a threshold of one is reached or a threshold of zero is reached. Yes? Yes. Yeah. That, that, then does that answer your question? Mm, to some extent, because uh, if, I, like, if I just look at the architecture, it means that uh, like, uh, the way I'm understanding it is like each neuron will be having the same inputs as the other. So it, sorry, sorry, each neuron will have? Will have the same inputs as the other. Because it looks like it's a mesh network. If the first, if the inputs to yeah, the yeah, first... But, but, okay, okay, all right. So, so let's, 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 let's um, uh, dig, dig, dig deeper. So if we've got X, one x uh, mm -hmm. two and x three right then you've got yes. one neuron right and then this yes. goes into here and we've got weight mm -hmm. one and and then this uh goes into there right and this into there and this into there and this into there and uh this into there Right, and also this into there, right? Mm -hmm. So here we've got uh, one, two, three um, um, uh, 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 neurons, right? So, so what, what you, so what, so what, what you see that right? this is weight one for neuron one, right? And this is uh, so mm -hmm. we can say this weight, weight one for neuron one. Then we've got weight one for neuron two. Then weight one for neuron uh, three. So they can, so so therefore we've got weight one for neuron one, weight one for neuron two, mm -hmm. and then weight um, weight um, um, uh, uh, three. For neuron uh, uh, one, so these weights are, are actually different; they're not the same. So therefore, oh, if we okay. then, yeah, so therefore it cannot be the same, right? Is okay. that making sense? Yes, now it's making sense because yeah. if the weights are the same, it would so, so be if, different. Yeah, so even if, if it looks looks like a mesh network, right? But mm -hmm. the associated weights are are, are then different, different, even though. The inputs are, are are the same. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Does that you answer so your question now? Yes, it does. All right. So so you so you guys you remember. Uh, Loss function, cost function, and, 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 gra and gradient uh, and gradient descent. Right. Um, so, what, what is important to um, to to know from um, uh, from 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 what we've done? So, you 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 be very comfortable when we're now uh, when we're now doing the uh, the, the 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 coding. Um, Okay, so let's cover all 
right? So, so we are saying the um, uh, the learning is an optimization problem. Uh, we update the weights and biases to to decrease uh, the, the the loss uh, the loss function, right? Um, so, so let me show you an example of 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 um, of, of neural ne ne networks and what what they actually uh, what they actually do. Um, Right. So let's say, for example, in this instance, we've got one input, right? And and this layer. Can you see my? Yes, yeah. you so, can see. Yeah. So so let let let's let, let's um um. All right. Let's 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 have one output, uh, and uh, let's consider the um uh, example that we are doing. That we've got three three inputs. Uh, three neurons and one output, right? And then in this case, the activation function, uh, let's call it a sigmoid, right? And what we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to learn the representation of X1, X2. Um, so, so, let's, so, so in this case, this is secular, uh, secular data, so it's a polynomial function. Uh, let's look at something uh, doesn't need to have um, some. Okay, let's just look at this. Can you see the data set? We've got different types of data sets. So we've got a polymon, uh, a scatter, a scatter plot, right? Um, so, so we've got a, a, a yes, a scatter um, um, where we're trying to learn uh, the representation of um, um, these. Um, um, Different, class, uh, different segments or classes, right? So what we can do is we can start training to see how well one hidden layer can learn this representation of the data. Is it able to clearly separ separate? You can clearly see there's one, two, three, and four. So if, if we start it, um, uh, you can see it's um, trying, yeah? And you see, uh, as it is, uh, so this is the uh, number of epochs as it is passing information. So you can see this clearly distinguished between, um, it, it is given as one, two, three. Can you see, it's given as three, um, three classes that it has identified, yes? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So let's, let, let's stop it. Let's add, uh, a hidden, uh, another hidden layer, and then within that hidden layer, let's add also three neurons, right? Yes? Yes. Yes, Doc. Right, so let's, uh, let's train this and let's see what we get. Yeah, can you see? By adding an extra hidden layer, it is now able to learn the other um, Yeah? Mm hmm So let's let, let's make it um one two three four. Let's see if we can identify four classes.
So, so, so you can see it's actually now even tightly uh, separating the boundaries between the different um, uh, data points. So can you see as you add more, uh, so we can add more um, uh, uh, neurons, right? And, and you see well, what the effect will, will be, and we, then we add uh, more, uh, more hidden, um, uh, more hidden, uh, more hidden layers, and you will see uh, it gets better and better as you add uh, more layers and more uh, more neurons. Yeah, this is is this is now it takes it takes then takes longer to um, um, uh, to train. So we'll, we'll actually do um, uh, let's try let's try a different a different data set. Let's see. Um, Yeah, so can you see, it is clearly separated the two, uh, the two classes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, I won't talk about reinforcement learning. You know, we, we, we spoke a lot about um, uh, re, 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 reinforcement learning. Um, the reinforcement learning, um, um, you recall what the agent is, what the environment is, that the objective of, of, of reinforcement learning is to um, maximize uh, our rewards. I gave an example, this example of the self-driving car, right? So with, so this is an example of a, um, of a game uh, using reinforcement learning uh, that is, is learning how to play, uh, how to play basketball, right? So where it, it's able to get the angle of the shorts, no matter its movement, right? Yeah. 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 So 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 this is how um, the, you know the problem was solved, and we will discuss. Uh, we'll do a detailed example of this. Um, when we are, uh, are doing reinforcement learning in more in more detail, so so let's 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 now look at um, uh, what you can do with deep learning, right? So if you have a a, a, a known answer, right? So you, uh, if you've got a known answer, right, you can use classic machine learning. So classic machine learning will do, which is a support vector machine. Uh, decision trees and and so on, and with well, what is equivalent to classical machine learning is shallow network, and we understand what the shallow no and and uh, 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 network uh, uh, does. But if you want a much more detailed um, uh, accuracy, uh, you can for for a known answer you can use you can use um, a, a deep learning. So when you've got a, a more difficult uh, a problem uh, to solve. So if we increase the complexity of the problem, right? So you can use uh, classic uh, reinforcement learning uh, to solve uh, the problem, right? But if you want a, a, a more uh, better uh, technique, you can actually uh, use a, a deep uh, a reinforcement learning. By deep reinforcement learning, what we're simply uh, saying is uh, in the case of uh, of the agent here, they're using a deep learning agent, right? Instead of a machine, um, an ordinary machine learning uh, machine learning algorithm. So, so what what deep learning does is it allows you to solve a quite uh, complex complex problems, 
right, as opposed to the traditional, to the classic machine learning, right? So deep learning allows you to solve quite complex pro uh, problems, right? So, so, so this is enough theory and, and background. And we'll leave it here in terms of the theory and tomorrow is only coding. We're not, we're not going to back we're not going to go back into theory. So I'll, I need you guys now to exhaust all your questions so that we make sure that you understand um, uh, deep learning as, 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 as much as, uh, as uh, you, you understand all the foundations of deep learning, right? You understand what an activation function is and why it is required. You understand what a bias is and why it is required. Uh, you understand um, how input is fed from uh, from one layer to the next layer. Uh, this is why it's called a feed-forward neural network because information is passed um, in a forward direction. And the training process of um, neural networks uh, is through uh, a back pro propagation. And back propagation is simply uh, you feed uh, information, uh, you start off by initializing weights randomly, and then you feed that information forward, and then you calculate the error rate by looking at the, pre the, 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 the predicted y minus the actual value of y, and then that error rate, you propagate it backwards, and then you readjust the weights, and then you feed that information forward to make sure that your uh, your loss function is, is, is converging or is, is, is decreasing. Yeah, and, 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 and what, what, what else do you, uh, do, do you guys need to, um, to know? We spoke about how weights are initialized. Uh, we, we also spoke about, um, Right. Um, we, we also spoke about about this that uh, we use some. That this is the architecture of a, of a neuron, a, a network of a neuron. You uh, if what inputs and associated um, uh, weights and a bias, and you you multiply the weights and the input, and and then you add the bias, and that goes through an activation function. So the activation function determines when the uh, neuron fires, right, or when information passes out of um, that uh, neuron onto the next um, neuron in the next layer. Yeah. And then we um, uh, spoke about the inspiration coming from, bi uh, from biological neurons, right? And then we spoke about um, uh, the computational power um, how, why, what has led to the success of deep neural, uh, uh, of deep learning. And then we spoke about uh, the, the deep learning revolution that it, uh, as compared to all other machine learning algorithms and statistical techniques, that deep learning, as you give it more and more data, it gets better and better, right? Uh, as you give it more, and da more data, the performance actually increases, right? Other, uh, algorithms or techniques, the performance actually plateaus, right? Um, are there any questions on this, guys? Because we are moving forward, it will just be coding. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, can, can you repeat on the um, purpose of the, of the bias? Uh, uh, can, can someone try to... To answer that question, I think I've answered that question. Yes. So let's see if someone can 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 answer the question. Why do we need a bias? Come on, guys. Can anyone answer the question? Why do we need a a, a, a bias? Is it need to cater for noise? Hello, Doc. 
Yes. Yeah, you said if we don't include the bias, it means that you will be passing through the origin uh, every time. So you are trying to increase the, the degree of the freedom, the area of learning, uh, either going down uh, negatively or upward uh, above their x axis. Sorry, can you see that again? Okay. Uh, okay, if I got you right, uh, we need the bias because um, we, we, we want to increase uh, three, sorry, uh, maybe I, I, if illustrating if it's um, on a graphical, maybe graphical depiction, I can, I can illustrate better. But um, from my understanding, you said that uh, if you don't include the bias, what it means is that uh, we, 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 are, we try and pass through the origin uh, every, every now and again. But uh, by including now the, the bias, it means that we, we are increasing the, the degree of the freedom or, uh, for, I mean, for, for space for learning. Yeah, that's, that's, absolute, that's absolutely correct. So, so, so that we... Um, you, 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 um, uh, oh, all right. oh, sorry, I'm not sharing my screen. Right. So, so what we're saying is, you, we, we have a neuron like this, uh, right? Then we've got uh, in inputs. Right, um, let's say X1, X2, X3, and then wait, and, and then uh, wait three, wait two, uh, wait one, and then the summation, uh, and this we we sum. And here we uh, it goes through the uh, the activation function, right? And then um, so this is um, uh, x i w i plus bias. So a the bias um, the bias term. So the reason why we add the bias term as uh, so let's consider for example. Uh, that we've got we've got data points, right? Uh, that we are trying to create the best line of uh, of, of of fit. Right. So if we if we remove the bias term, we'll have um, x i w i. So this is equivalent to. Um, so if if we say a y and 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 we say this is x, so this is equivalent to having a line, a line of it only only that passes through. Uh, lines that pass through uh, the origin because we do not have uh, an intercept term, right, which passes, which intercepts through Y. So when we add the bias term, what that then does is it gives us the ability to create these lines of fit that have an intercept. So what, is, what that means uh, uh, in technical terms is it um, increases the degrees of freedom of learn because um, we can learn um, even data that is, for example, uh, data points that are, are here, right? 
we can actually uh, uh, learn uh, data points that are, are here because we can actually just draw um, a baseline um, line of fit uh, because that increases our degree of freedom to um, to learn. Right. So without the bias term, what that simply means is we are restricted uh, to this angle, right? Only, only to learn. And then if we add a bias term, uh, it's it's limitless, right? It's limitless. Right? We, uh, we increase the degrees of freedom to uh, to learn. Does that answer your 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 question? So a bias term increases the degrees of freedom to uh, to learn. Yes, uh, thank, thank you, Doc. I think right. Yeah, guys. Are there any any other questions? Any any anything at all? So we, we so that we can exhaust all the all, all the questions. So because tomorrow is only uh, going forward, it's only coding. And going into detail of uh, of the uh, machine learning algorithm algorithms. So tomorrow we'll do an example of classification. Right? We we'll show you how to uh, do classification. We we'll do classification. Uh, classification and then the next day we'll do regression. So we'll do one technique um, uh, per day, which will be easier than trying to squeeze a lot of um, the concepts in one in one um, one evening. Come on, guys. Are there any any questions? Oh, all right, guys. So, so if the so if there are not any more further questions, let's um, we meet again tomorrow. So tomorrow we'll be doing a, 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 you'll be developing your first um, a, a deep learning algorithm using um, a, class, a classification. So, uh, so the assumption. Um, The assumption is is, is that um, the assumption is that uh, you, you you've got TensorFlow working. So we we'll, we'll, we'll dabble a little bit into TensorFlow as I show you how to um, and explain how to uh, develop um, our models using the REST API. So the assumption is your your TensorFlow is now working. Um, sorry, Doc. Just to ask, by my practical is Mangwana, is TensorFlow the only thing we have to install prior to the lecture? Yeah, that's the only thing you 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 need to have. Okay, thank you.
All right, guys, thank you. So we'll, we'll reconvene uh, again tomorrow. Thank you, Doc.